possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Good morning. Welcome to the RTE GA podcast. I hope you're all well. Mikey Stafford and Rory Neal have been joined by a, a pair of uh, powerful midfielders today, and Enda McGinley and Kieran Whelan. Um, Enda, welcome to the podcast. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, good, Mikey. Nice and early. Yeah. Uh, Whelan, you're on New as much as Rory, so you don't get uh, you don't get an individual hello. I'm afraid. No, thanks, Mikey. How how are you keeping, Mikey? By the way, I'm good. Thanks, Liz. A couple of weeks ago, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. No, no, I, I'm good. <laughs> I I didn't really. I went to Exford for a couple of days. <laughs> I, it just isn't really a way, shall we say? But my children slept, so I considered it a holiday. Um, yes. Anyway, enough about me. Uh, we have a football only weekend this weekend, and there's quite a few games which you had. I suppose categorised under under intriguing for a variety of reasons. Oh, intriguing! You have to be careful. Yeah, there's yeah. A, a, <laughs> be careful with that word. There's a man well, in Temple. No, he could be getting very upset when you mention <laughs> the word intriguing. <laughs> uh, he's not here anymore. Um, yeah, I'm sure he was, I'm sure he was intrigued in Chile. And <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I thought. I thought. I, I, a lot of people poo pooed that game. I really enjoyed it. I don't know. I, I, mean, look, I know. I know. Issue with it, but I'm sure if Pat's plan was there, he would have. <laughs> he would have found it intriguing. Right <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we'll get on to we'll get on to matters in Division One, which can be officially categorised as intriguing at this stage because we've reached that stage. As I think Mick Foley said on uh, one of our first podcasts this year, he said the football league's fantastic. He said it's one of those competitions that everybody's really interested in at the beginning, and then gradually interest wanes as you get towards the final. So we're getting to that stage in Division One where there are certain counties, your own end, and a few more who are kind of need to win games to not end up in division two but the team's on six five seven points now in division one they're kind of like beginning to wonder about what's it all about um so we'll get to that shortly but uh, we might start with division two and um the gay rt game on saturday evening um at five o'clock inside the park and the game of the weekend arguably you would say uh Derry versus dublin um Probably going to be the top two teams in Division Two, yeah. um, which is what most people would have gambled on before we started. But uh, there's certainly bragging rights to be had in finishing top and kind of maybe being able to relax a little bit coming down the stretch. Wheelo, I'll go to you. Go to you first. Um, do you travel with confidence? Uh, no, I wouldn't say Dublin are traveling overly confident. Um, I think it's probably listen. It's the biggest game in Division Two. Both these teams look like. They're breaking away from the others and are heading back to Division One. Um, and you'd like to think, Mikey, that if, if it was one game that we might get a spin out of Dublin or get a lift in their performance, that this will be it. Uh, and likewise, Derry at home will have seen the opportunity of the Dubs coming up to, to as 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 a a great chance to take them down a peg or two. So, I think. <clears throat> You know, Derry have been excellent in the league. We know that they're they're they they've a lot of work done. They're superbly conditioned. Um, we know what they bring to the table now in terms of defensively and trying to break them down. Uh, they've definitely worked on their transition play. They're definitely attacking with a lot more pace. I think last year, last year, if you remember, they kind of would have slowed it down a bit till runners got ahead of the ball sometimes, and they were a little bit labors going forward, and you always felt they were kind of maybe going to run out of road. But they've definitely added a bit of impetus to their attack and play and their running line. So I think it's a I think it's a massive challenge uh, in that we know what we're going to get from Derry. We don't really know what we're going to get from Dublin. Um, and they've been very patchy in the league so far. Um, you know the you know they haven't really found any new players and 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 really at the start of the year was trying to find that little bit of depth. Um, and particularly defensively. Now I know they're missing. You know, David Byrne hasn't been fully fit. Merchants being out, and you know, if you look at Dublin and you were to write their first fifteen down on paper, still they're very strong. But listen, I've been saying it for two or three years that there was a, there was a depth issue, um, and and Desi has tried a lot of new players over the last twelve to eighteen months, and and nobody really has put their hand up. Um, so Dublin have been have looked easy to play against in recent weeks. Um, their defence has been exposed. Um, obviously they're bringing back the likes of McCaffrey and McCarthy and they're, they're, they're 
gradually bringing back some of their key players. But I'd be really hoping that this weekend that they have we get we get a, a spin out of Dublin in terms of their energy levels, in terms of their intensity, in terms of a bit of structure, uh, because I haven't seen that in the league. And you're kind of you're wondering sometimes. You're stepping back and you're saying. You know, is it is it is it because it's Division Two? Are they coasting? Are they are they preparing for later in the year? They're not going to face probably a Division One team probably to the latter stages of the championship. You know, and you're and you're wondering are they getting the time and right to come later on, where a lot of teams are are, are exhausting a lot of energy early in the year. I'd like they were to, awful you know, in the league last year, obviously, and you yeah. know almost came within a, a kick of winning all Ireland semi final. Yeah, so you're like you're kind of hoping that there is that Dublin will improve as they go along, but so far it's been a little bit concerning, and I I think it's a massive game for them to deliver an, a performance on Saturday night, and I'm really looking forward to it because this is. This ultimately, like in a strange sort of way, it's Dublin's biggest game probably now until, you know, the, maybe possibly the group stages. Uh, yeah. you know, they're going to come up When's again. the last time Dublin would have went into the game as, as underdogs in, in any competition? Like it, it's yeah. bound to be a long, long time since Dublin has yeah, been probably, in that situation. Well, yeah, absolutely. And uh, probably like last, maybe in the semi final last year, they're marginal underdogs, maybe against Kerry, but. You know, toss, toss of the coin thing. kind of thing, wasn't it? Really? Was even, yeah. So they're going, they, they are going in as underdogs, and, and rightly so, because the performances just haven't been to that level. And you know, but, yes, they dug it out and scored the last seven points of the game last would week. That, would that tickle their fancy? Experienced players that came to the fore again. Sorry, or would that tickle their fancy a little bit? Like, would that appeal to their ego? Would that maybe light a little bit of a fire under them? And maybe give us would you think is that something that they could go up there saying hang on a second we're Dublin and you know I don't well, know I, I, you still have that core of experienced any winners like you know mm. in sentence your Kilkenny's your Conor Callens your James McCarthy's these guys will drive the agenda uh, and you're that's the, 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 there's no doubt about it. you expect that you're going to get 20% more from Dublin this weekend but it'd be worrying if we don't if there's mm, a flatness yeah. and a lack of energy mm, there yeah. then you're kind of stepping back and you're going really where at them so it's, I, I think it's a brilliant barometer to see what's left in Dublin's tank you know yeah I, a bit of a, a turn I was covering last Derry's championship game again Galway last year and the, one of the things I said was that to play Derry, the very first thing you have to do is match Derry, match Derry's intensity and match Derry's hunger. And for Dublin, that's the key thing this weekend is, yeah. is the fact that they're being written off, is the fact that people are seeing Derry as actually a better team than them at the minute. Is that enough just to stoke the wee bit of pride, stoke the wee bit of a dog in them yeah. to really see what they bring out? And then the fascinating thing for me is Dublin know better than anybody. They, they cracked defensive football the last time Dublin were the team that realised right stay out of contact pass the ball around the arc keep the ball keep the ball and they had such good footballers that they, they practically never lost possession they just wore teams down but I think if and if that's the mode they fall into and that's how they're going to play Derry the one thing that surprised me about the other teams in Division 2 bar Louth no team has set up the way I would have thought the general sort of conventional wisdom is how you go against playing Derry or how you go against playing a, a team that's very much blanket defence, brilliant counter-attack is to is to mirror them. Mm -hmm. uh, no team bar Louth has done that with Derry. Louth caused Derry quite a bit of problems. Dublin know that that's, or Dublin traditionally, that's how they play it against this system. But Derry's attack and play, you mentioned it, Kieran. yeah, their transition is brilliant. But their lines of attack, their, their variation whenever they're attacking, they seem to have this policy of accelerating whenever a forward gets on the ball, whatever position, rather than loads of times people, they take the ball and they're quite slow, they go out around the arc, they'll pass it on to the next one. Dare you accelerate? They'll accelerate off the turn, they'll accelerate a new angle, somebody else will be accelerating off them. And they are cutting teams to ribbons at the minute at the back line. I would love to see how Dublin, Dublin have the quality to try to curtail that. What way are they going to go about it? Are they going to sort of sit off and go sort of a zone defence? Are they going to go a really tight toe-to-toe man-to-man marking job? Mm. It's fascinating either way. Like even, like I, the, the contrast on the sideline between Rory Gallagher and Desi would be fascinating. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, right, like I'm sure you all remember the, the tweet that went out and it went almost viral. It was... Um, 
quote from Jim Gavin about how if he was shouting on the side, he doesn't feel he has to shout on the sideline because if you're shouting on the sideline, it's a sign that your team isn't coached. Now, I didn't really buy that at the time because Jason Sherlock spent more time on the pitch than not the Jim Gavin area. And I'm sure Jason, he wasn't Jason, just... Jason Sherlock put the death knell on the mere four no? in, in lots of ways. Well, that's it. So, and I'm sure it wasn't just carrying water that he was doing. But anyway, mm. uh, but Rory Gallagher is like the job that he's done is phenomenal. He's not exactly not giving instructions to the players. It's it's phenomenal. Like even the last day against me, those up at it, and on the Mead kickout, uh, or in the Derry kickout, if Derry couldn't get the short away and me that sort of spaced themselves that they couldn't get the short away, Gallagher pretty much every kickout was roaring out, roaring out to Derry. Mark your man, mark your man on the Derry kickout. Yeah, it, it's. You know, so that's obviously getting close and then that creates the space that you then can break into. But it's that level of organisation that Gallagher's bringing. They are like a machine at the minute. Uh, their attacking play is awesome. Uh, what Dublin are going to bring, are they going to bring the energy that's going to be required to take on Derry? Because if they don't, if they turn up and go through the motions, which you could say that they have been doing, Derry will do a complete job on them. But yeah. for okay. me, it's so difficult as a player, Kieran, knew would have been... Uh, Unless you feel challenged, it's really hard to hit top gear. Uh, and until you're actually challenged, then you start to see what's inside. And for Dublin, for me, that's that's this weekend. I, I, I think, Andy, you're 100% right. I think it would be very interesting uh, very interesting to see. While Dublin, you expect they're going to bring energy and intensity, and you'd expect that this is the game that gets their backs up and, 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 and we get a performance. I'm very interested to see their structure though, because I think defensively they've been very, very open and and I haven't seen any inclination, you know, in the last couple of years of, of Dublin sitting very deep, you know, and they, they, they kind of press out the field, they might drop off. Now they were conceding kickouts against Cork, which surprised me. I, I couldn't I couldn't get my head around that piece, but they play that press in that middle third. You know, against Derry and their count away the counter-attack, they will have to be a little bit deeper and they will have to protect their full back line. And I think it's key. It'd be very interesting to see how Dublin tactically are set up to deal with Derry's game plan. Uh, because if they let Derry, as you say, dictate the terms of the game, they'll get sucked in and caught on, on, on their counter-attack because they haven't got, they won't unlikely to have their best six defenders on the field. Um, and that will be an area where I think they could get exposed uh, with, with that strong Derry attacking game. But, but we know, you, you mentioned there, and this is, again, like, so you say if they let Derry dictate the terms of engagement and how, and the terms of the game itself, how do you, how do you flip that on its head when you're playing a team like Derry? Is it like Arinda said, you literally have to mirror image in terms yeah. of your setup? I think yeah, you, you you can certainly mirror image if you want if you're if you have the comfortable game plan, you have your balance between your attacking game and your defensive game. And I think that comes with you know, Dublin were excellent at breaking down defensive structures. I think even if you look at Kerry will have learned a hell of a lot from last weekend, even because now Kerry are, you know, way teams are treating Kerry and the threat they have in the forward line. That's the way teams were approaching Dublin probably when they were in their pump in terms of closing down those space, double teaming on key players, making it difficult. And Kerry, Kerry are going to learn from that. Dublin where it took Dublin a while. If you go back, they, they took the harsh, harsh lessons of Donegal. What, that's when, that was a perfect example of Donegal dictating the terms of the game and hitting Dublin on the counter-attack. And Derry are probably not unlike that. You know, that's the type of game plan they're going to come up against on Saturday night. So it's really making sure they are, they're they not vulnerable on the counter-attack, Rory, holding, holding their position and their structure defensively while also being patient, I suppose, and breaking down the carry defence. So, yeah. so they have they have to get a balance to their game. But Dublin, I think, for the last couple of years have been playing just... They, they'll play on the front foot and they're the type of team that are comfortable in saying, right, we'll, we'll, we'll play you whatever way you want and we'll... We'll, we'll back ourselves when we beat you but I don't the way they're performing at the moment they can't go with that approach hmm. um, we know on midfield I suppose is is very interesting because Derry obviously with the discovery of Owen McAvoy at full back being able to move Brendan Rodgers yeah. to midfield and he looks himself and Connor Glass just look like if you were to pick a midfield pairing you know Ooh, that Rory top. Gallagher would like <laughs> that would be the engine room of a non-stop um, 
footballing machine like Derry, they'd be the two you choose. And I just wonder who you think should be alongside Fenton, who is arguably the best midfielder uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you, I, since I, you I, retired, Wheelow. Um, I, would, and... I wouldn't. I wouldn't fancy coming up against those two Terry boys. I'm sure end of you saying I wouldn't fancy playing them now. No. Either. So who got, is it? James McCarthy? Yeah. Is it Lahif? Is it Okafik Burn? Uh, who is the who is, is the best Brian, partner is, for is Fenton? Brian, is Brian Howard? Oh, well, injured. Brian, for Brian, Brian bit, Howard yeah. was obviously off traveling, and he he oh, played. Traveling, with, was he? he played with Rahini in their last league game. So whether he's going to be part of the panel this weekend, I don't know. But bit early, he'll maybe play with the club again. But he's certainly on his way back. He would be possibly my preference, Mikey, um, mm. uh, himself, or possibly James McCarthy. But you know, James is obviously in the twilight of his career as well. But I've always felt that uh, Brian Howard. Would be the would be the perfect file for Brian Fenton, and I think, I think it's it's an area that Dublin need to get a bit of consistency and bed down and decide who 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 that person is because there's been a lot of chopping and changing, and Fenton is playing with different partners and stuff like that, and that that's hugely important from a midfielder's perspective to to have a good understanding which are which 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 are midfield partner in terms of the knowing where he's going to cover what runs you're going to make you develop that that's an instinctive thing that develops on the training pitch and over time and Fenton hasn't had that but if you ask me I would be going uh, Brian Howard would be my preference to, mm. to put in there because Brian Howard's another one who's been used in you know half forward center forward back. center back mid, midfield I think he needs to be you know given a particular role and let 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 him develop in that role as well yeah and then and uh at, at either end of the field you've got well uh, for Derry at least you've got like I could be you know one of the most informed footballers in the country in in Shane McGuigan um and that's something you probably say for the last two years or somebody he almost seems to, like he hasn't plateaued you know from the from the league performances I've seen thus far and I'd just be interested to think how Dublin deal with him, as as we also Dublin aren't inclined to to drop off to the degree of Derry, so there's probably a man marking job there, and the Dublin defence is missing a few of his front liners. People, well, he hasn't played, he didn't play the last time. McFit Simons, who might be someone, at least two or three years ago, who might you might detail that job to, and then at the other end, you've got the delightful prospect of Conor Callahan um having Chrissy McCaig in his pocket for for seventy minutes, perhaps. So um, yeah, or even. Owen, I'd love to see it. Does does Gallagher trust Owen McAvoy mm. to, to yeah. go on con? Like what what a battle if that comes mm. about. You know, them man to man matchups, as you say, potentially we've got McGuigan possibly in Fitzsimmons, you've got possibly Glass on Fenton, you've got Con and possibly Owen McAvoy, as you say, Chrissy McCaig, or maybe Dean Rock would would Gallagher go with McCluskey on, on Dean Rock and just ask him to bomb up the field because I'm I'm sure that Dean Rock wouldn't fancy <laughs> wouldn't fancy 70 minutes of that. So, uh, but absolutely, McGuigan's massive. But for me, Derry's Derry's main line at the minute is their half forward line. They've three men in serious form in their half forward line, and so many of those sort of brilliant angled fast runs we picked passes originate from that half forward line of Nell Toner, Paul Cassidy, and and, and Ethan Doherty. They are such a powerful platform for them. And obviously McGuigan inside, you've you've Benny Heron and nipping around now Lockton, but uh, the dairy of such a settled team. That's one of the real differences. And you would say by textbook, by good things to do, Gallagher's approach to using his full panel is very, very different to what's out there. He comes out very strongly. I remember last year he came out very strongly. He says, I know 13 of my first 15, uh, and I will keep playing them. Uh, the sub chances will be limited. There's boys that know they're not going to get game time. There's mm. some boys that will get fringe game, but there's uh, the rest. Colin, the Colin Key said game. during the week in the Irish Independent, he has a squad. He has a panel of twenty seven, and he's not looking to add to that, which is interesting. Just straight away from the the, the man on the streets point of view, is like, how do you play A versus B games? You know, he's got a panel yeah, of twenty seven. No, so very very different. Now it does. Derry's, we, we talk about depth, we talk about depth across lots of teams. We don't really focus on Derry's depth because they're they're doing so well. But they have very, very little in terms of off the bench. They have two or three boys that they turn to regularly to come in and finish out games. Uh, but they have very little experience. Gallagher's approach, while absolutely brilliant, has an attrition rate. There are several good footballers that are not now with Derry this year. Again, there's no spotlight in that because they're going so well. Their team knows each other like the back of their hand because they played practically every Mechanic Cup game together and every game last season together. Obviously, that runs into trouble if they get injuries. They haven't to date. Uh, but 
their forward line is brilliant. They know each other so well, as I'm saying. Half forward line in particular is, is, is Dublin's big line to try and take down. Uh, their movement and the amount of running they do in the course of a game is something else at the minute, and they're all in form. Yeah. Um, Rory, it's, it, it does feel like that there's no hiding place in this game. It, like, there's no... It's hard to make the argument. Uh, it's just the league. The two points is important. You want to finish top of the table. But also, as you say, like Dublin season needs a spark. And I'd say Rory Gallagher feels he needs, having not made it out of Division 2 year, last year, he needs the vindication of finishing top this year and also beating a team who everybody sees as a Division 1 team just on a holiday. Layers, layers and layers of, what was the word we mentioned at the start? In, <laughs> in, intrigue. I think there's so many layers to it and it'll make for, I think, a absolutely fascinating contest. Can't wait for it. The... Um, Derry missing out on promotion to Division One last year. I st- I I think rankles with them in a big way. They're, for me and from what I've seen so far, they're the best team in Ulster by a distance, actually by a good bit, and they're in Division Two, which is bonkers when you think that there's four Ulster teams in Division One. So um, I think it'll be a fantastic test for Dublin. It's an it's a brilliant game in many ways for Desi Farrell because. He's going to find out exactly now where he stands. The chances are both of these teams are going to be promoted anyway. So this is it's 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 a game coming at the perfect time for both teams. And I think both managers will find out so much. It's an ideal game, actually. Um but um I think yeah, I and I think Dublin, Dub- Dublin, Dub- Dublin, Dublin Dublin will find it tough up there. There's no doubt about it. The only question mark, and um, and to be interested to get your views on as well, is that when you look at obviously they've missed out on promotion and they've put they've put a lot of energy into the league and the McKenna Cup and obviously a lot of work done before Christmas and and they're reigning they're Ulster tight, champions. And they're and very all. tight panel. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was a very compact season and they're playing at a very high level in February and they've to continue that on now to probably have ambitions of winning Ulster again and then into a group system. You just wonder. You know, will they have like will they have the legs? Will for the engine year? go? Like, like, because yeah. the type of game they play, you just is it sustainable? That's mm. that would be my mm. the only thing you'd have. No, I'd know. fully agree. Like yeah. that, he, even in his treatment of in Gallagher's approach to the Glen players, yeah, yeah. straight yeah. back in, straight like, back in, yeah. unbelievably yeah. ruthless and focused. But the players are all in the same boat. Now, when that's going well, and, right. and, and you're playing. <laughs> They're running with a wind at their back. It's just phenomenal at the minute. Mm. Uh, will it run out? That Again, that would be conventional wisdom that you don't want to peak in the season too early. Derry are flat out. I, I don't see that they're playing at 90% and there's another level here. Nope, they are going flat out. Uh, mm. But Gallagher is a unique individual in terms of what he's getting out of them fellas is, is phenomenal. Uh, so it'll be very interesting to see can they maintain it but they're great to watch at the minute Saturday I honestly cannot wait it mm. is it is probably the league game of the year so far and the fact that it's in Division 2 say, says a lot <laughs> uh, but yeah I, I, I can't wait for it it's just set up perfectly like I remember I think it was against Meath the reporter put to Gallagher that Dublin were probably the accepted number one, and does he feel he's in a position for number two? <laughs> I was just looking at it. Who is that Gallagher, brave Gallagher person? And I just thought, there's, yeah. there's team talk sort of. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. Um, and just a note before we move on to um, another game in Division Two, a, a draw won't do Dublin much good. Uh, scoring difference: Derry plus forty points, Dublin plus thirteen points. So. Um, the other, the, the other thing, Mikey, is they're likely to have to play each other in Crow Park in a few weeks' time. Mm. Yeah, know? that's the thing. You can't avoid the old final when you <laughs> want to get promoted, can you? There's no pulling up the handbrake in Division 2. The, the, the one thing about the finals are, I, I think, I, I would have always had a slight bit of an issue about it, the value of league finals, particularly mm. in Division 1. Mm. Uh, but when it's one week out from Championship, or, or yeah. two weeks out from Championship, I just, them them's not... Going to be games that I think teams are going to be going flat out. Gallagher's going to find 15 players from outside the 27 to play in it, probably. (laughs) You get Glenn to play it for him. Um, (laughs) So, the other game in particular, Rory, I think you wanted to mention just because of um, how seismic it could be. Uh, Just a a quick uh, outline on Division 2. So, you got Derry Dublin on eight points, you got Cork, Louth, and Meath on four points. 
he got Claire, Claire and Kildare on two and Limerick on none. So I suppose, Roy, the accepted thinking is one more win for Cork, Louth and me, then they'd probably not be safe, but be breathing a little bit easier. Uh, whereas if Limerick, Kildare and Claire don't start picking up points soon, they're going to be very worried, which brings us to RD on Sunday and Louth versus Kildare. And Louth have had a lot of very tricky fixtures, I think, starting out. But have impressed as as Enda mentioned, like how they how Mickey Hart approached Derry, whereas Kildare did okay against Dublin and got a shot, got got a good win against uh, Clare, wasn't it? And since then, it's kind of been, um, you know, it hasn't been so good. And last week's horror show against Derry wouldn't have Lily White's travelling up to RD with much confidence. You could probably say as well they were really lucky to get the win below an Ennis. I mean, they were, it was 15-12. According to David Tuberty, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was 15-12 in the 71st minute. They won the game 16-15. And um, you could, you know, you could easily make the argument that Kildare could be sitting on zero points. Like, I mean, we asked the question when we were here on Monday morning, what's going on in Kildare? You just don't know. And they've had two absolute hammerings at home. And, you know, I just... I don't know. I mean, it's it, it it's a really it's it's a bit of a puzzle. I'd imagine if some really good people involved there, but I think the result of the weekend last weekend, which was loud overturning Meath, has given them a massive in you know injection of oxygen in terms of their ability to stay in Division Two, and um, like at home this weekend against the Kildare team with a very brittle. Uh, level of confidence that game is that game has all the makings of um, potentially and like I mean if, if Louth were to win that you know and then you're looking at a situation where Kildare were being touted as potentially the second best team in Leinster and they're heading for the Tally, tally Cup oh, my <laughs> goodness you know it's we know it um not not that the dub would ever take any delight in their neighbors misfortunes but it's been it's been kind of drop off because Kildare, while they went down last year with Dublin, they they kind of you know there was a few moral victories and a few actual victories, but people were kind of thinking they didn't look out of place in Division One altogether, and this year they almost look out of place in Division Two. It's it's it is like I know now they've had a couple of key men, like Daniel Flynn's kind of come back to fitness and he is so but so every important. team every team has that though. Yeah. Mickey. I don't think they yeah. can use that as an excuse. It's not an excuse, but it's yeah. a factor yeah, as well. I, I think Mike in last year the home form was good and people probably say they're a little bit unlucky and there was first year management and there was probably an element of bounce. And and I think when you look at when you look at the National League from the last four rounds, you know, you can kind of accept teams will have maybe a bad performance, one bad performance, or they're going through a training block, or one day it doesn't happen. And that's that's acceptable. I think every, you know, consistency is is a challenge for every team. But when you're consistently bad, it's a problem. Uh, and I think though the manner of those two defeats for it to happen, you know, once at home against Cork, but to happen again um, against Derry, is concerning and the vibes coming from the county like just the rumor mill is not good you know there's, there's, there's a sense there's an unhappy camp there so it's uh it, it's it's going to be very interesting to see can they get anything from them like the game against like i think i think division two is where it is this weekend like if you look mm. you know limerick at home to mead like that's not going to be easy for mead either uh, to go down there loud at home to Kildare and Clare at home to Cork. If, if those three teams were to turn out wins at, with home advantage, it would really throw the cat among the pigeons for uh, the last two games in Division 2. But you'd expect Mead might get something out of Limerick. Um, and then the, 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 the next two games, Clare have been extremely unlucky, really. They've probably have been unlucky. Didn't get in from the dubs, you know what I mean? They've had a couple of close encounters, even against Kildare. Next, next Congress, I think they'll be bringing a motion to go back to 60 minutes of inter-county, to be honest. Yeah, big you. time. So they, they, I, like, they, I, they, they won't be one bit worried about Cork either, Wheelo. They won't no, be one bit won't, worried. No, absolutely not. Even though Cork are, Cork are going well, you'd expect that, you know, Cork are full of confidence going down there after wrapping up six goals last week. But I just think Kildare now is a massive game. And, and, and if, if Kildare perform poorly again, um, and Loud were to turn them over, and 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 they'll 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 find Loud very difficult to break down. Loud are well organised, good structure and play, um, playing well on the counter attack. We know the Mickey Hart template, um, and 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 the probably the criticism of 
Kildare is that they don't look like they don't look like they know what they're doing. So um, it, that's mm. that's that's a that's a, that's a massive game. Yeah, a massive game, really. and uh, you obviously know Mickey Hart as well as anybody. Um, and we've spoken to a few of his former players here about Louth, and they just said, "Yeah, I'm not not at all surprised." And you you could make the like uh, Wheeler makes a good point there. Kildare don't really know how they're playing. You watch Louth, and the, everybody knows exactly what they're doing. Even the three outfield players who've been asked to play in goal this year know exactly what they're doing. Well, James Cliff is back now and he seems to probably stay there seeing as he had trials at United or something. But um, they, they know exactly what they're doing. And I would go so far as to say if it wasn't this unusual year in Division 2 where you have the Ulster champions and Dublin, I'd say Mickey Hart would be looking at this saying, we're, we, could, we could be in Division 1 next year, lads. I think we're good enough. And I think he probably he might accept that that's not the reality this year. But he's he's building something and... There's no doubt that they have, especially in the forwards, some incredibly talented footballers. I guarantee you that Mickey would have been thinking he could have been in Division One this year as well as 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 that. Uh, no, Louth, like Louth, typical of a lot of teams. It's it's been quite a funny season for them in that they they probably they should have beat Clare. So while Clare have been just about the unluckiest team in the country the last two weeks, they took a huge chunk of luck. Mm, yeah, I think there were five down going into injury time against Louth in the first game at home. Yeah. And Louth somehow managed to to lose it by a point, and that seemed to be a massive one. But their last two wins have been massive. Now Louth's win against Meath, Meath were in a really strong position. They were five up, and then the, the, a pass got intercepted right out in midfield with with nobody at home. Mm. So you can say that was either unlucky or or one one mistake cost them very very dear because Louth then got right back at them. Uh, but yes, they set up. They're very very solid. Our D. The one thing when I was looking at the start of this year, I thought it's going to be tough for them because the caliber of teams that are there now, the non performance of Kildare has definitely helped them in that regard. Uh, but the one thing I thought was that RD will be a good venue. They will look to make that a really difficult place to go to because it's not like most normal county grounds. And they, they can make it really uncomfortable <laughs> for teams in there. That's, that's a very that's a very diplomat that's a very diplomatic <laughs> way of putting it. It's there it's, it's an intriguing venue. Yeah, it's an intriguing venue. <laughs> <menu. laughs> uh, uh. it's, it's 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 a different type of ground and kind of then they're they're teams are out of their comfort zone and then loud go and make it even more uncomfortable. Uh, put you under a lot of pressure. They're really targeting opposition kickouts at the minute, putting a lot of press on them. Uh, they're obviously they're, they're tight defensive shape and they have enough quality they've, they've loads of really good workers in that team mm. but they've enough bits of quality sprinkled around it as well uh, to, to make it count at the other end plenty of experience so they, they'll know though they have Cork and Dublin I think to finish in their final two games so and I think the like Cork game could, is away it's away like uh, the, the, the mad thing is and they could still be relegated that's uh, no, the reality. I, that's that's the, how the, bizarre the, mm. the the bottom of Division Two table is. And when I say bottom, I mean the six teams other than Dublin or Derry. You know. Yeah, they also don't know when they finish whether they're going to be in the Sam Maguire or the Talton, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, before we move on to Division One, and I wanted to pick your brain, particularly just on one Division Three game because two teams you would know pretty well, and it's a it's a big game in Division Three, Cavan versus Down in in Breffney on on Sunday. Um, down were the sick man of Ulster last year and you know a lot of players not going in etc etc not a lot of hope for them but Conor Laverty's working the oracle slightly um, have you any insight into what exactly it is he's doing? Absolutely you're, you're always hoping as a new manager you're hoping you get a decent bounce he's got a massive bounce his personality is one of those ultra sort of charismatic he will take people with them he will energise the entire group he has worked them exceptionally hard fitness-wise. It has been old school. Uh, he has worked them very, very hard. Kilku weren't noted to be unfit. And the first thing Kilku would always have done is match anybody in terms of their work rate and their desire and all of that. And that, that has been absent, to be honest. That has been absent for down for the last couple of years. And so Connor went, that, that, that was target number one. The, these boys are going to work. Uh, they're, they're still... A fairly inexperienced team. They're not the finished article, but it's Division Three you're living in. And from my experience there, every team has a chance. It is trying to cut out the wee mistakes, and then it's maintaining that belief right to the very end of games and maintaining that uh, sort of solidity right to the very end of games and being able to write it out because so many games 
are decided on wee silly mistakes that creep in or purple bad patches and games that go on for too long because you don't have the game management to sort of switch it around or to shut it down whenever things are going badly. Uh, so he's got them going really, really solidly. And then you get the wee bit of momentum and the wee bit of boost. And all of those teams in Division 3 are in a difficult enough place. Either they've just come down or they've come up. There's a lot of change of management in there. Uh, but Cavan's, a, Cavan's going to be a massive test. Cavan, for me, even last year when they were in Division 4, whenever I started studying them, they, they look like a Division 2 team physically. Mm. Uh, unreal. Uh, Michael Graham, the job he's done to be able to hold a huge panel of boys together that are very experienced, that are at a great age now, uh, I think Cavan a wee bit like Dublin, Derry. Uh, they 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 look like a team that's in the division below where where they should be. So that'll be Down's big test on this this weekend. Yeah, and then just while we're there, um, on your own former charges, uh, they're 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 kind of getting sucked into it down there now at the moment with winless Tipperary Longford who managed to avoid both of them managed to avoid winning last week when they played each other. And Antrim of West Mead away this weekend. So that, that, you know, it does look a bit sticky for them at the moment. Yeah, they were Sean Quigley last weekend, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, not the first and not the last. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, very disappointing. They were in a really, really strong position. They had a great result down in Tipperary. Uh, we're in a really strong position again for Mana. And then just the wheels came off the wagon and Fermanagh got a brilliant run at them at the end. And obviously, you have to be unlucky too to lose with a last minute goal. Like, that's always. Uh, a, a sucker punch, uh, but yes, they're dragged right back down into Westmeath. Going down to Westmeath and, and sort of needing points is is not really where you want to be. But uh, again, I think Limerick or not Limerick, Longford is really struggling in Division Three there, and I think Tipperary are are struggling as well. So uh, I would imagine those two for me would still be favourites to go down mm-hmm. unless something suddenly changes. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's. It's, as I said, the quality isn't quite what it is in Division 2, but Division 3 is always quite intriguing too because nobody wants to get sucked down to the home of Wexford and Watford, which is known as Division 4. We won't go there. We did enough bleak Wexford GA chat on Monday. I get a week off, I get a week off when it's only football. Wheelow, uh, back up to Division 1, to the to, to the nosebleed seats there. Um, I guess the, 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 the when we get into the intriguing games now, shall we copyright Pat Spillane? Um, and Ross Common Mayo is 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 that game, I think, 245 in the height on Sunday. Uh, the risk for both of them here is that they win and um, end up in the league final. And what would be worse is if they ended up in the league final against each other, because then they'd be playing each other three times in the space of about two months and with a with a Connacht uh, quarterfinal looming. Um, actually, Mikey, it's an interesting point that actually I was working it out last night just before. Sorry, we'd have to cut in. You you could have a situation where by um they could end up playing each other in theory, you know, not by all any means uh, given, but between FBD League, National League, Division One final, they we know they're going to meet in the championship, and they could end up in the same round robin group as well, so they could end up playing each other six maybe certainly six times over the course and that's one of the quirks of this new particular calendar and i think it's a dangerous thing when two counties that are in close proximity end up meeting each other that regularly i've seen it before with my own county and how toxic the relationship can get and i'm sure enda has plenty of experience (laughs) going back to 03 or 405 with tyrone and armagh and how you know it's not necessarily the most healthiest of situations when you're meeting that often, but look, that's where we are. Yeah. So we look, what, 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 what do they do here? Does, <laughs> does like, does, 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 does Davy Burke kind of, uh, you know, do a bit of experimentation here, you know, play the Murtas, one of the Murtas in goal, one at full back, you know, does they does they no shave move to, you know, I don't know, wing back, you know, does Kevin McStay do some serious, um, experimenting here like we, we talked here about the the handbrake or the parachute and um you know Eamon made the fair point that that's not a very easy thing to do you don't send a team out to lose but you can send them out to try something new I guess can you I think Mike it's fair to say this game is intriguing isn't it <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it, like it's 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 a very like you look at division one and and you're thinking you know, if Tyrone were to were to get a performance and Armagh were to get a performance, you're gonna, you know, it, it's gonna everyone's gonna be 
on five, six points, and it's going to make the it could make the last round very interesting in terms of relegation, you know, because they could all become very compact because some of the teams at the top are kind of gone, mm, don't really fancy the league final. Yeah. We're, getting, we, we, we're, get, we're, we're safe. So the last Can couple of we know, could I ask you actually, Rila, sorry to interrupt, could yeah. I ask you on that? And it's just my own theory again. And again, look, there's we've no anecdotal evidence because we're in ground, we're at ground zero with this whole new concept. I have a small bit of a theory that what we could end up seeing over time is Division 1 and Division 2 almost morph into the old Division 1A and 1B, where relegation, I'm not entirely sure, from Division 1 will become such a big issue. Is that a plausible theory in your view? It's possible, Rory. Yeah, it, it is possible in terms of looking at the structure that we have now and, and, and the teams going forward to to obviously the Sam Maguire that it's the top two divisions and you could have a 1A, 1B. So it certainly, it fits, you know what I mean? It would fit and it might it might take away. But I think it's, I, I think the downside is the compact season. And I think if you look from Mayo's perspective last year and the damage the league final done to them, you know, mm-hmm. mentally uh, and physically and even, you know, you got you always got that sense James Horn didn't want to be bringing them up to Dublin a week before a championship match and, you know where they where they have to come down mentally and get ready for a big game and big game of the year. I I think if anything, Rory, I think over the next two or three years, I think the importance of the provincial championships might dwindle when 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 teams really get a sense of what's involved in the compact season in terms of the number of games and the requirements around conditioning and what's required to actually win the All Ireland or be peak come the group stages. So I think. I think if anything, there'll be a knock-on effect maybe on the provincial championships as 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 we get it more familiar with this system. But mm. you know, as regards the weekend, Mikey, to get back to I suppose the question, Sorry. like if you look at and I know this this might sound off the wall, but if you look at okay, Manon have Galway at the weekend, which would be a tough fixture, right? But then they've Tyrone at home, right? And they've been going well at home. Tyrone are obviously a bit off, off the boil at the moment. And then they may own their last game, which might be waving the white, white flag saying, we don't want to go to Crow Park. They could end up on eight points, you know? So so anybody could stumble into a, a final, you know what I mean? No, nobody's kind of out of it. But for this weekend, I, I think, Mikey, you'll see, I think both teams will experiment, if I'm being honest with you. May, more so Mayo, I would think. Um, I think Kevin definitely made reference to those first four games being priority uh, and and getting in the right position. Now, six points is not that they probably need seven, uh, eight. Do you know what I mean? So it's 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 it would be very interesting. But I think there will be an element of exper- experimentation on probably both sides, um, and they they both still want the performance from the team. It would still be you know it would still be a very very good game, um, but I I do think like I, I, it's going to be. It's going to be really interesting over the next two or three weeks to see how ver- the various teams approach games based on the position that they are. Um, and, and like who, like if you were to go through, who wants to be in a league final? Would Ross Common like to be in a national final? Maybe they would. I think Ross Common's. Yeah, I think they might, you know, they might push on. Yeah. I think Ross Common's the only one really, like Jack O'Connor even said, they don't really want a league title this year. Yeah. He said so it. You've, yeah. got the, you've, you've got the top three in Division 1, Mayo and Kerry, aren't really particularly interested in a Division yeah. 1 title. They did it last year, they don't want to do it again. Tick. You know, so is, <laughs> uh, for me, I think Roscommon are probably the more interested party yeah. in that. Uh, then on that end, of just because to go back to mention the, the, the column you wrote for RT website, um, where you kind of you kind of looked at Armagh's ultra defensive approach down in Tralee and you know, you said this wasn't about Kerry and it wasn't even about Armagh in the league. They were thinking ahead to Derry and how Galway had had done Derry in an all Ireland semi final by by mirroring Derry and this is kind of what you, you reckon this is what Geezer was doing. He was trialing that. And that's interesting. That's Armagh using the league to kind of come up with a plan B. So maybe Nick, who else who else has a plan B or needs a plan B? I would say Kevin McStay's mail thus far they have a plan A and it's working very, very, very well. They're scoring a lot of goals. Aidan McShea is 75, 80% of the game playing his inside forward and they're trying to play him 20, 30 yard passes and people buzzing off him. It works very well. Is Ross Common the game for Kevin McStay to say, okay, now now we're going to try and, you know, rope a dope Ross Common because our Ross Common a team, you can feasibly say, oh, they're, they're a bit, they're, you know, they're not carrying attacks. Okay? Is that the game to try ultra defensive or do they try, is it a matter of trying different personnel or do you think there is something Kevin McStay could do this weekend? Uh, 
for me, for for them, it's it's more maybe looking at at your matchups. Have have you got because he's lost the likes of Ashin Mullen and Lee Keegan from last year, who would your be your go to sort of man markers for the likes of Enda Smith and that. So it it gives for me a, a match like this that the end result isn't particularly important uh, for both teams. It it gives them a chance to look at defenders on direct opponents because no matter whether the team doesn't want a, a win or not, an individual player can weigh up or, and get the measure of somebody else because whenever two boys are going against each other, that battle itself will, will be going okay. So I think both managers can look at their sort of their their potential uh, matchups that are obviously always important in any championship game and, and that may be the most most important thing to come out of this weekend for, for Mayo. But in terms of a plan B, Mayo's flying at the minute, obviously. But I, I do maintain that for any team to win something, they'll either have games or opponents where they have to set up slightly differently and alter that dial to a wee bit more defensive or not. Mm. Uh, but there'll also be moments in a game. If you're two, three points up and you lose a man to a black card or a red card in the final 10 minutes, you need to be able to control that game. You need to be able to shut down. Or if you have a black card paid in the middle of the game, you need to be able to manage that period, shut it down a wee bit, and then go a wee bit more. If you're an absolute toe-to-toe team and you're down a man, if you keep trying to be that gung-ho during that period, that, that could be the illusion of the game right there and then. So I think every team needs to have that ability that they can condense, that they can maybe give the opposition their kick out and see what they look like whenever they're doing that. If you're trying that for the first time in a, in a huge championship game in Croke Park, that's not exactly where, where, where you want to be doing that. All teams, for me, are playing a, a, a version of the similar game at the minute where at times they will get multiple, multiple bodies back. If it's not 13 bodies, it's 15 bodies. But the, the, the difference in that is slight. Uh, and all teams are pushing men hard. Up, up the pitch when they get the chances. Again, slightly different there. He's putting three right inside the full forward line. Others are trying a more long ball. There's just sort of a slight difference in how much long ball some teams are playing than others. And that's maybe to do with who's inside and who's the target in there. So, But, but they're all variations. But I think you have to have an ability to turn the dial towards defensive. Or if you're chasing a game, if you're two points down, you and as Derry found out last year, they didn't have the ability to go front foot. Mm. So they, they, they need to see, can they go and chase a game? Yeah. Can they be two, three points down and just go? Uh, and I think the league, bottom line, the league should be about development. Yes, you're looking at your squad depth, and that's important to, to get your personnel. But I think there's nothing like an acid test for your, your system and your ability to tweak things uh, as trying something different in the league. I think, yeah. I think on that, Mikey, it's kind of the point Dan is making. It's, similar. it's one thing I think Jim Gavin was... was, was was very strong on the what if scenarios, you know, and he used to have a long list of the what if scenarios, whether you're chasing that game two points down, whether you have a black card, whether you're going to maybe experiment and go longer on your kickouts. So you're working on an overload or you're working on a, a press and you're breaking the game, breaking the game down into various sectors to try and try out scenarios for later on in the year that the team actually knows exactly what they're doing, depending on who they're up against or depending on the scenario within the game. So, you know, the, the cup, there probably would be a, an element of that, you know, the teams will be will begin to, I'd say, working on with a, with a view to later in the year. Yeah. And Rory, for Ross Common, as I say, like, I think it's a fair point that a league final might be good for them. It, it, it secures uh, their place in Division 1 for the very least. But also for Ross Common, Davy Murky has trialed a lot of players. You know, he's brought in, a, like, he's got a new goalkeeper, he's got a new corner four, he's got a couple of new backs. And then you look at the defence, or sorry, you look at the bench, Rory, and he's got, like, He's got Donny Smith, uh, Connor Cox, kind of Niall Kilroy come up. So there's a little bit of depth there for Ross Common. So I'd say Davy Burke, as much as anything, is probably just wanting to try and kind of mix and match and, and kind of blend his personnel a bit, I'd say. Because he has, you know, for a to come up from Division 2, like compared to Derry, you'd say they have more stra- squad depth than Derry, shall we say. So like they, he has he has things to play with and combinations to try, I think. Big time. And he has, um, uh, I think he's building again. I think an awful lot of the teams, as you're going to see, I wouldn't expect. Be very interesting to see their team selection. Will we see Enda Smith, for instance, this weekend? Maybe not. I think you might. You might see the Cotton Wool come out a little bit for a couple of these players. And 
we will see, um, you know, lads getting an opportunity to play this weekend. Like the reality is facing into a Connacht Championship. Connacht is fascinating for me, given the fact that the proximity of the championship now is so close and six weeks away, less than six weeks away now. And all the all the, yeah. all the top teams are on one side. <laughs> and as well as that, like, so when you get into the All-Ireland Round Robin series, there's going to be four Connacht teams in there. There's only five teams in Connacht in total. I mean, <laughs> if you leave aside the jaunt across to New York but there's you know so there's four Connacht teams in in going to be in the Sam Maguire um, round robin stages so I think it's again I think this weekend it could be an element of a little bit of a phony war um, but there'll still be a massive crowd in the height and I think whatever two teams get put out onto the field as as, as I was saying earlier when it's two neighbouring counties it'll have a derby feel and whoever's out there will go a hammer and tongs but I just think in terms of team selection will be really interesting um, and it could yeah it, it'll still be a very good game looking forward to it it's live I think on TG Car quarter mm. to three so yeah, yeah but at the same time you, you, everything everything now is going to have a, a caveat attached I think as we approach the concluding stages you mentioned the uh, God like the, the the makeup of the of the of the uh, All-Ireland and uh, how many teams from each province like um, if Westmead somehow make it to a Leinster final, can they against Dublin? There could be two Leinster teams in the Well, there's guaranteed to be end. two because you yeah, have that's the, what I mean. Two provincial com- finalists, yeah, guaranteed. But if Westmead, as the Talton Cup winners of last year, make it to a provincial final, I'd say you'd have two Leinster teams. But anyway, sorry, my woes of Leinster yeah. GA keep sleeping in here. That's apologies. Um, speaking of woes, there's a segue. Enda onto your your native <laughs> county. Um, as you said before, we came on here. Here we were talking Not about. Yeah, we were so we were talking about team. <laughs> the plan B and Enda said well we, we do with a plan A at the moment um uh, Ter- uh Tyrone v Kerry um obviously the the league meeting of a couple of years ago is storied at this stage how a good hiding from Kerry was the springboard for Tyrone's All-Ireland All-Ireland victory um I don't think they want to hide in this weekend I think they need two points rather desperately Enda don't they and at the moment you're looking at them and just you're just you're just talking about a spark needed by Dublin. That's only kind of almost a philosophical spark they need. Like, you know, Tyrone need a real spark, don't they? Something has to happen soon. Yeah, I suppose the, the hope is that Mayo is the is that carry hammering of, of 2021. Uh, and that performance down in Mayo marks the, the bottom of the barrel. But Tyrone's, Tyrone's in a difficult place at the minute. I, I suppose being been semi close to several of the lads in and around it. You, you you just feel sorry as as a player. We've all been part of teams that get into ruts and Tyrone are in a rut. Uh, there is they're not playing well. That's bottom line. That, that, that's fairly obvious. But they're getting absolutely no rub of the green either. In that Roscommon game, in their first game midway through that second half, they played against the win. They reeled in the five point win. Bang bang bang. Really quick. They had a guilt edge goal chance. When Roscommon were on the ropes halfway, they take that. I think it was a Darry Canavan pass it through to Darren McCurry, yeah. and it just it just went away when the goal. It was almost easier to score, and just that wee bit of lack of luck again. Galway did a couple of really guilt edge goal chances as well, and didn't take them. Take them, and it's a very different place where they are now. They are devoid of confidence. A uh, big players for them are not in form, and the problem that that happens or can happen around a squad is whenever a big player isn't informed, they're they're annoyed at themselves and they're focused on themselves and trying to get themselves right. Uh, and if you've your senior players and that sort of enough of them in that place, then the leadership and the energy to the group is is off. It's not there. Uh, so they're they're playing with a lack of confidence and a lack of belief. They're not working particularly hard uh, on the pitch and that's massive. That's that's sort of ingredient one that you have to have. And then they're not getting the rub of the green. Now, the rub of the green, you, you, you have no control over that. Uh, your own form, there was basic errors in the last match that, like simple fist passes, simple fumbles, simple shots, that, that we're all human, so those mistakes can happen to anybody. Uh, but they should happen maybe once in an inter-county game, if that. And it should stand out. It was almost like a funny thing, and that's silly. It was happened repeatedly with, with Tyrone the last day. So they, they need to cut out the basic errors and get really, really focused on that, uh, get the energy back to where it is. And if they do that, maybe they, they also need something to just fall their way. Uh, Kerry coming up, 
that's that's a tough challenge, a, a scary challenge in, in some ways. And it's all about the mood within that camp, whether they feel that this this is something that they can raise for. Bottom line, though, Trone are sitting at the bottom of the mountain and they're looking up and it's a tough, tough climb. And they've got their medals in their pockets. A lot of them have medals in their pockets. Are they ready to make the first hard steps and start climbing up that hill? Because that's, that's what has been asked of them. They are still, in terms of individual talent, they are still a really, really good team. They are a strong team. They are, and they're, they're just a few wee things away from rediscovering that. Mm. Uh, but until they, they do and decide that they really want to climb that hill again, uh, they're, they're, they're miles off it. If you're, for me, the game is such a high level at the minute that if you're in Division 1 and you're at 90%, you're, you, you're in massive, massive trouble because all their teams are just so sharp and it, it is, don't it expect is, any mercy from Kerry, put it like that. It is curious, though, that Conor Myler, Kieran McGeary, Con Kilpatrick, Parra Campsey, but so many players, so many key players and so many kind of leaders within the team have all suffered a, a fall off in form at a very similar time. It's unusual or curious, I think. Is there any chance, Wheeler, we're, 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 you know, we're, we're wringing our hands over like a, you know, a, a, like a consistent All-Ireland like challenger here because of early league form and we're talking about the length of the season and it's a uncharted territory and all counties and managers are going to approach it in different ways like is, is there a chance Toronto are just doing things differently here and you know their training load or whatever is is what's impacting them here and perhaps they're playing the long game well as Anna said they need a spark maybe they need a good row but you know back the bomb or something to <laughs> inject inject something into them and get them going but uh no I think I think the concerns from a Tyrone perspective is that uh, again similar to Kilvair that consistent lack of consistency if you want to call it that um in that um they just look lost in you know and 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 you can you step back like a look at you look at Kildare and you look at Tyrone and probably Dublin to a lesser extent and you're just looking for that spark that bit of energy at, and, and that work rate that it's really that raw appetite and hunger and Tyrone just don't look like to have that because that's what they've built their success on in the past it's that intensity uh, the general basics of the game that just appear to be missing. And I'm also a bit, I suppose, curious around their their tactics, even the rotating full forward and moving Con Patrick and Brian Kennedy in and out and stuff like that. And you know, it doesn't appear to be working. And uh, so I, I I think tactically they've they've lost their way and that their defensive shape is not there. Uh, and even going forward, it's not there. And then when you've got your you know that energy in that middle third, which was the Milers, the McGearys, they they were the they were the full complaint of that All Ireland win two years ago, and, and and the energy they brought to the middle third of the pitch. And when that's not there, it's concerning. So, um, it's early in the year, Mikey, and, and and I'm sure you know they can easily turn around, you know, mm -hmm. one or two performances and get them back on track. Um, but Sunday's a tough one. You know, Kerry Kerry don't travel that particularly well. You know, and and similar to. Similar to Dublin going to Derry, you would think that Tyrone, like there's, 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 it's such a strong rivalry, you know, of the last couple of decades that you it'll, would it'll trigger something you, for Tyrone. You would think that it would trigger something from yeah. Tyrone and you'd see that bit of energy from them on Sunday. If you don't, similar to Kildare, it's a concern. Yeah, and Oma obviously will be it will be a factor. Um, we won't cover every game as and our mad only goal being on TV on Saturday night. We can discuss that on Monday, but and I just they're an endless, endless source of fascination for myself and Rory on this podcast every spring in their means of survival and Monaghan you know the death rights have been read after the first two rounds again they're sitting pretty on four points and I wouldn't bet against them getting a result against Galway on Sunday I just I, I cannot wouldn't bet against them wouldn't bet against I'd make, I'd make them favourites um, <laughs> it's just from your you'd obviously have scouted them and everything else and and, um, and like they, they, the fascinating thing for me is they regenerate every year it's not a massive playing yeah. population every year and they've regular change of managers um and but they 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 don't seem to be weakened they're just i think some of their neighbors must look at them and just wondering what the hell's going on they're, they're just a phenomenal team phenomenal. i think yeah i i remember at the back of sort of my playing career uh tommy freeman 
was the main man in the Monaghan attack, and it was always assumed whenever Tommy went, oh, Monaghan's in oh, trouble. That's them gone now, yeah. <laughs> and, and they've been in trouble ever since. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so uh, obviously Manny has went now. McManus is obviously playing much less uh, time now, but uh, ma- they, they got a massive stroke of luck in Jack McLaren's hamstring injury. I would say heart were truly in mouths, and it turned out it was a fairly minor one. I'm not sure which game. I think it was maybe game one or game two. Yeah. Uh, and he came back the next game, and I think his his he's so pivotal to that, to that Monaghan uh, forward line and, and, and their scoring ability. Michal Bannigan and Conor McCarthy are, are really starting to look like a, a lovely and that triumvirate mm. is looking to carry a threat. Darren Hughes has returned He's really massive, nice and solid yeah. sitting in. Monaghan are a really steady, solid team. You should know a wee, a wee bit like Tyrone. You should know what you're getting when you're playing in Monaghan, that they are, their, their work rate and their desire, their, their playing for each other the whole time, very, very mm. tight unit. Uh, they should be defensively dogged back there, and and they've they've got that back. But it, it's always sort of the, have they enough up front? Uh, and with those three fellas, they they are able to get good scores. Uh, so Vinnie Corey will be like huge, huge job to take on for mm. for Vinnie Corey and for him to have ruled out those first couple of losses, which is tough, and to keep the team right and to keep them there and to come back now with two wins is massive. Uh, not safe. But you just, you just, it's Monaghan. There, it's hard not to see that they're going to survive. Yeah, you throw like there was, you know, we like there, there was a lot of, there was nobody rushing to take the job, shall we say? And you, you kind of look at it then, and you're like, there's so much. I throw Sean Jones in there as well, just like a forward who's like very yeah. unpredictable yeah. and very like he gives you something a little bit different and like. The playing talent is there, so you wonder why so many kind of managers, reportedly, we don't know how serious you are, kind of came in, had a look, and said, "Nah, not for me." Yeah, uh, well, I, I suppose you can look at that in a few ways. Maybe the, the process wasn't handled maybe greatly either, as well. Uh, but uh, Vinnie Curry obviously was, you know, again, we know his legacy in Monaghan, and, and maybe, maybe it suited them better to have somebody going in that was ingrained in the county. Um, yeah, I think that did. timing was right in terms of. You know, keeping the Darren Hughes involved, Kieran Hughes and and Conor McManus and stuff like that, they would have all soldiered with Vinny and, and maybe ultimately was the right call for them. But um, listen, they've been excellent at home, and as I said, they they finish up against Mayo at home. Um, I, I'm not too sure whether they're maybe away to Mayo, but they've certainly Tyrone at home could, as well. Could be so. the Mayo under 15s if Mayo go yeah, too well in the yeah, next couple so of weeks. Like all of a sudden, their, their season has turned around, but it was really. You, you kind of forget maybe people are writing them off in those first couple of games, but they were missing they were missing a lot of their key players. And you know, particularly I think the return of Darren Hughes in the center of that defense, what what he offers them there in terms of his smartness, his intelligence, knowing his reading of the game is excellent and, and he is short of that defense knowing so, and his experience, like, like yeah. um mm. so yeah, like you just you can never you just can never write them off and and they could still stumble into a league final if everyone else is trying to get out of it, you know, or else they could be relegated. That's the fascinating <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can guarantee one thing, Monaghan will not be relegated. No. <laughs> like it, it and it is extraordinary, Mikey. They're in division one since 2015, like eight years. I just think uh, you know I think they're, I said this before, a shining example for what you can achieve. And this, oh, we're only a small county. Um, I think they dispel that excuse better than anyone. Yeah. And then we've been talking Monaghan up a bit. I think we'll have to get Maliki Clerken on in the next few weeks for us to talk, <laughs> yeah, to yeah, talk yeah, them yeah, down yeah, again. Yeah, Give yeah, us some yeah, miserable yeah, inside, yeah, yeah. inside line or on Monaghan. Stony Gray soil. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need that. Okay, yeah. gents, I think we might leave it at that. I think we've, we've covered matters reasonably well. Um, obviously that game Dublin Derry is on RTE2 on um, Saturday might be might break viewership figures for Division 2 Allianz League match Um, and you can keep across all the other games on radio with RTE Radio 1's Saturday Sport and Sunday Sport and reports reaction live blogs highlights etc on the RTE website and the RTE News app so thank you Enda thank you Wheelot thank you Rory and myself and Rory will be back again on Monday so we'll chat to you then Good luck. by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us. What I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it! He hits it!